Hey, Lux here. Back in June of last year, I made a video that I was too afraid to release. It's a video about when VU meters are clipping, what is and isn't happening at that time. But honestly, I felt like I could be wrong. I didn't have the confidence in what I believed to be true, so it's been collecting dust on my computer. Uh, so watch it, tell me what you think, uh, let's have a civil discussion down below, do me a flavor and do the thumbs thing and the subscribe thing and I'd be grateful for that. So let's see the video I was too chicken to share. Hey, this is Lux, and it's rare that while writing, producing, and mixing, you don't experience that red at the top of a meter telling you that you're clipping. This might manifest on a track's VU meter, or your favorite VST synth has a preset that's over the limit. You'll also find it rear its ugly head and an effects chain from time to time. We all remedy this in different ways, but is this a bad thing? You might be surprised that in many cases, just because you're seeing the red, nothing bad is occurring at all. So I want to try and cover three things. I want to show you when, where, and why you can comfortably ignore the red clipping indicator, basic gain staging concepts and how it will improve your mix, and a simple way to tame your master stereo out. As you can see, I'm here in Ableton Live, but this holds true in Logic, Reaper, and other DAWs. It is important for me to say that I'm not advocating that you allow every track and every plugin to have a solid red meter. I'm only demonstrating what's happening under the hood and why you don't have to be nearly as concerned knowing that what you think is clipping is not doing so. For starters though, arguably the most useful plugin live offers is utility. This I believe should be used on every track and in some cases multiple times. Think of it as a sheriff that is keeping everyone's gain under control. You see, nearly all DAWs live in the 32-bit floating point world. This processing is why clipping will nearly never occur on plugins that support it, track faders, and volume gain plugins. Where it will manifest is on the master out and plugins that are not using 32-bit floating point processing. How do you know which plugin does and does not use 32-bit floating point processing? I have no idea, uh, but it'll clearly become evident if and when digital clipping occurs. I have a drum loop that I'm about to play, and I put a utility on its track. Now I'm going to lower the gain of that utility plugin, negative 20 dB, and then I'm going to go to the volume on the clip. Uh, loop, that is, and raise its volume so that we'll see a great deal of clipping to the left in that little meter by utility. Um, yet, what you're going to hear is that no clipping is occurring. So let me give this a go. All right, so I'm going to lower this down, as I said, negative 20 dB or close to it. I'm going to go to the clip here and let's hit play. And I'm going to raise the volume on the clip. All right, let's go back to utility. We can see that it's uh, obviously telling us that we have some clipping occurring. Yet, as long as utility here is uh, allowing uh, that signal to not pass through, just because we lowered it to negative 20 dB, uh, we're not going to have any clipping occurring. So, yeah, that explains what's happening under the hood. That's the 32-bit floating point processing uh, at work. Now I'm going to place a plugin that I know takes advantage of the 32-bit processing. I'll put this EQ by Yuhi, and then I will place another utility after it. Another word of warning though, don't try this at home as one rung move and you're gonna blow your monitors, headphones, eardrums. I'm gonna turn the gain on the second utility down to negative 20-ish dB, allowing the signal to enter that EQ at a blistering hot level. Let's do that. All right, now you can see a lot of red in the chain below. But as long as the chain ends with utility, 
all is in control and no digital clipping is occurring as you might think it will. So let's take it a step further. So what do you think will happen if we allow some of that high gain signal through to the master out? Uh, let's do that. Okay, as you can see, the master is not happy at all and clipping will occur based on that signal that's sent to the master out. But why not have a utility as the first plugin on the master chain? Um, that's exactly what I have done here. I have a utility on the master out and I'm gonna lower its gain around negative 20 dB and increase the audio loop so that it's clipping, as you can see right here on the track fader. But as long as utility, again, is catching that, and you're able to throttle it back, no clipping is going to occur. So again, if the utility on the master is first in line, whatever signal enters will not clip as long as you compensate by lowering the gain. A real world example is what I like to do. I keep a utility or a gain plugin, depending on the DAW I'm using, and have it if I need it, just to make small adjustments prior to what might follow. And I'm not using it to correct a wrong in my mix, but as a great way to bring things back just a little bit, if need be. All right, let's talk about proper gain staging now that we understand that clipping is occurring far less than you think it is. So when should you insert a utility or a gain plugin? I recommend for starters you insert as the very first plugin on an audio track and right after any virtual instrument. This way you're ready to control the gain, width, and panning first thing and can leave the track faders alone until you really need them. Okay, here I have Serum and I prefer letting utility be first in line to adjust the levels down to a comfortable negative 12 dB. As you can see here, close enough. Now I'll do this on every track. This gives us plenty of room to work with and it keeps the master happy and under control. Okay, now I'll turn on this decapitator followed by another utility. You might be saying, but wait, Decapitator and many other plugins have gain output that I can control, which is true. But I like the ability to not only see the level leaving Decapitator or the other effects, but I also have a lot faster uh, ability to adjust the gain uh, leaving those plugins. So what I'll do is lower the utility, the last utility in the chain, down a little bit just to protect ourselves. I will uh, play this little uh, clip here I made. And you can see Decapitator is doing its decapitating job, but I can force uh, levels into Decapitator at a clipping point, not that we necessarily would want to do that, but I'm just showing you. And I can keep the gain uh, down at this last utility as that might be an effect we want to have as far as sometimes driving a plug-in. But otherwise, it's just another way to keep the uh, chain of effects under control. And again, that leads to our master fader, our master output, also uh, providing us lots of headroom uh, for us to work with as the mix progresses or as the song progresses. So additionally, with utility, I have control over the stereo field and its width and pan. Now I can make the signal mono, and at any time, I can also just be creative on what and where I do things within the chain of effects. But one thing you should notice is that I have yet to move any of the track faders, and I believe that's a good thing. That's something I want to save for later. Lastly, I place a utility as the first plug-in on the master out. Uh, this gives me the ability to kind of tweak the gain a little bit and also adjust the gain going into any plugins that I insert on the master, kind of helping me hit the sweet spot of that specific plugin. All right. Thank you. Hope this is helpful and have a great day.